What is going on guys? We are back and today we are going to be starting a brand new Surviving Wish series, one that I have been looking forward to for quite some time now. It is going to be Surviving with Buildcraft. Now you guys have been asking for Buildcraft for a really, really long time now. Ever since I asked you guys for recommendations, Buildcraft has always been one of, if not the most highly requested ones. Um, but I've never actually decided to record a video on it because there's been some great documentation and series out there on YouTube that could help people out with it. But some of those series are, you know, a couple years old now. There have been some updates and some changes. Uh, and when I say some, I mean a lot. So we're going to make the series now and hopefully get to go through all the fun stuff, all the change stuff, and make a nice playlist that will help people start playing with Buildcraft 7, which is the version that we're going to be playing with right now. Now, the main reason that I'm really excited for this series is because it is going to be super nostalgic for me. Uh, some of you guys that started playing when modded Minecraft was just starting out, uh, you know, with early Feed the Beast, and I forget the name of the pack that was like the, the Technic pack. Um, I just remember playing with like Buildcraft was one of the mods that you would play with. Uh, I remember using the pipes and the machines and the quarries. It was just the go-to mod. And so playing with this now and even just looking through some of the things in JEI, I'm getting some wicked nostalgia just looking at, you know, all the different engines and stuff like that because I have not played with it in so, so long. So uh, definitely excited for that. And I hope some of you guys will experience that nostalgia along with me. But putting that aside, we do have a lot of stuff to take care of today, so getting the last bit of housekeeping out of the way, if you are brand new to the Surviving With series, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. The seed for the world will always be in the video description. It is Rage BC if you would like to play along, and you can kind of, you know, build where I'm building and all that good stuff. And then along with that, a mod list will also be in the description, with Buildcraft, of course, being the main mod, and then some supporting mods like JEI, Whala, Journey Maps, all that good stuff. But if you ever have a question, feel free to post it in the comments and I do my best to respond as fast as I can. Now, that was a lot of rambling. That was at least, I'd say, three minutes of rambling. So hopefully I haven't scared you guys away if you're brand new. But uh, I did do a little bit of building at the beginning of the series. It was recommended to me a while ago that I no longer show the punching of trees and all that. And I just go and do some gathering. So the first episode, we can actually jump into how to get started. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, I always have a chest that I put all the stuff in that we're going to need for the building for that day's episode so you guys can get a good idea of just how expensive it's going to be and just what you need if you want to follow along. So, what we're going to be doing today is trying to set up a mining well. Now, I did mention that we used quarries from Buildcraft, and Buildcraft does have a great quarry system. Unfortunately, when we want to get a quarry set up, uh, if we look at the recipe for it, I believe it's right here, we're going to need diamonds, and I don't really feel like manually mining my way to diamonds when I could be doing other more important stuff to help me progress in other portions of the mod. So we're going to set up automated mining in a little bit of a lower scale. Now, since the quarry can be set up using, you know, bigger dimensions, uh, the mining well is a smaller scaled down version where you're going to place the block down and it's only going to dig in a line straight down until it hits lava or bedrock. Chances are you're going to hit lava. Um, but if it can make it all the way down to bedrock, you know, good on you. You picked a good spot and you made it down there and it's just going to give you all this stuff from that one line. And then typically you would take it, you'd shift it over one and let it do the process all over again. And while that, you know, isn't the greatest way to get stuff, it allows you to not just go mining. You can AFK, you can do other things, you know, make some food, watch some Netflix or, you know, I, I don't know, do some homework, anything like that. So it's definitely worth setting up early on because it's pretty darn cheap. So we're going to be setting that up and we're going to be using Sterling engines. Now you could use combustion engines if you want. You shouldn't be gated behind anything if you were able to, uh, you know, already get iron and all that. That's really the only thing different between making a Sterling engine and combustion engine. But we're not going to go over how to set up a combustion engine today. So if you want to do that, it's uh, a little bit more powerful. But we're going to be going over a Sterling engine. So we're going to grab all this stuff out. And uh, the coal is not required for crafting. That is going to be the fuel for the Sterling engine. Um, but we'll go over that a little bit later. So the first thing we're going to do is make two Sterling engines to power one mining well. You could use 10 maxed out, so they've already been running for a little bit, redstone engines. But that's a little bit of a pain in the butt to actually set all that up. So we're going to be using two Sterling engines with coal. Or uh, you could use one with lava, but I'm not going to get lava right now. So we're going to do two with coal. And um, that should cover us for being able to run this at its maximum speed. So we need to make a couple pistons. We're going to make two. And then we need to make some stone gears. I apologize because we're going to be crafting a lot of different gears today. Uh, but we're just going to make, you know, as we go. Just because I don't want to accidentally make too many of one and too little of another. And we're going to get all of our fun recipe unlocks as we craft these. 
because of course, you know, we'll never get them again, but these are the super basic things that craft into everything, so fun times. So there we go, we've got our two Sterling engines, and uh, now we're gonna make obviously what we're powering, which is going to be the mining well, and this is gonna be the most expensive part of today's craft, and it's really not that expensive. Uh, so here we go, we can do iron pickaxe, just like so. And uh, thankfully no achievement for that, or it wasn't even an achievement, a recipe unlock, you wouldn't even get one anyway, I don't think, but thankfully we've already got some iron tools in here, so we're not gonna have to deal with that for that one. Uh, and then we can go back, where is it, mining well, and we need to make the iron gear, which means we gotta go through all of these steps again, we can just manually do it this time. Pretty simple to just upgrade from gear to gear, so there we go. We got the iron gear now, and now we've got the mining well. And of course, it tries to suck in my damaged pickaxe, which it can't even use. Uh, so I don't know why it would try to suck that in, but there we go. So we've got the main components. Now, I did have a chest that was in the chest for crafting, uh, and that is because that's what we're going to store this in. If you don't have anything to store it in, I guess you could just stand on top of the mining well because it should just spit out the blocks at the top if you've got no pipe or chest nearby for it to go into. And of course, the pipe is going to lead into a chest most times. So it, really, if you don't have a chest, it's just going to get spit out somewhere. Uh, so I would highly advise you to at least have one chest, if not more. Uh, and then we are going to be making some of the pipes. Now, the reason we're going to be making these pipes in the way I'm discussing them today is because uh, I want to make it easier for whenever we're moving this. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, the mining well only goes down uh, right below it. So obviously you need to pick it up and move it. You don't need a wrench or anything. You're going to break it with a pickaxe and it won't go away. Um, but you're going to place it down. It's going to mine and you're going to move it. And of course you could have the Sterling engines putting directly into the mining well, and you could have a chest right next to the mining well, but then every single time you're going to have to break them and reset them up. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt. So what we're going to do today is set up a little hub where you're going to have the Sterling engines in your chest, and you're just going to have to add on one pipe, or I guess it'd be two pipes, one for the items, one for the power every single time you move it. And you will just be able to leave the chest with all its goodies in it at this main little hub and sort of clear out an area and then pick it up once you've cleared out, you know, the sizable area and move it somewhere else. But I think that's the best option. So you're not constantly breaking and replacing things and uh, it'll just be a little bit more efficient. So we're going to be making uh, the pipes that we're going to use. So first things first, we're going to be making the wooden transport pipe. And these pipes are made to actually extract things. Uh, you can't attach a bunch of wooden pipes to each other. Um, you're just going to place them down next to, you know, a machine you're trying to pull from. And they typically would require a uh, an engine to actually power them. So you might need like a redstone engine attached to these to suck stuff out. We're not going to have to deal with that today. Um, but we're also then going to be making a set of cobblestone pipes. So the same way, it's just glass in the center and cobblestone. And those are going to be transport pipes, cobblestone. And they, of course, don't have the, you know, little extraction pipe tag because that's special to wooden transport pipes or wooden pipes, I should say. Now, we're also going to be upgrading some of these to make them into these uh, kinesis pipes. Now, these don't move items. They're going to move power. And that's what we're going to be using with our Sterling engines. So you're going to put one in and then you're going to put a piece of redstone in and we are going to get a kinesis pipe. And then we're going to do the same thing with the cobblestone because we're going to want that. And uh, eventually, if we want to craft another one, we could, but we're not going to need it, you know, more until we actually uh, go to move our mining well. So I might come up here and grab some extra redstone just so that when we move it, which we will hopefully do today, uh, you know, I can craft them in my inventory. That's the nice thing. It's not a big craft. So you are perfectly fine just taking the resources with you and crafting as you go. Uh, and I think that really should be it. Uh, we're going to travel a little bit away because I don't want to be mining a ton of area right near my base, but we'll travel over here a little bit, not too far. Let me grab out some dirt and we can kind of fill this in right down here is a perfectly fine area, I guess, for us to start setting it up in, uh, close enough to the house that we're not moving super far away, but it shouldn't give us any, you know, impact if we're trying to build something, you know, make a basement or whatnot for the house. Also, I hope you guys like us having a little house now. Usually, we start out either in a cave or a little, you know, hole in the ground or uh, even just outside with no protection, and people always want me to build a house. So I made, uh, as Chillum would call it in the original Surviving Wiz series, a little bit of a crap shack over there. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to get to building, and we're going to set up the hub first. So we're going to put down the Sterling engines. I'm going to start this as close to the house as I can. So we'll put them down, one here and one here. And of course, they're pointing up at the sky. And then if we were to grab out, let's say, and I'll give a good example. So let's say we grab out a cobblestone. Let's do the kinesis pipe. 
So we put this down. These don't do anything. So this is not the right thing. You might be thinking, oh, you need to wrench these into place. No, we don't. And don't mind the weird particle effects because of the unfinished texture. I don't know why those are there, but it doesn't really matter. But uh, if we were to grab the wooden kinesis pipe, we put that down, they immediately turn. And if we were to put another one down, it would immediately connect to this. That is because you need to have a wooden pipe to pull the power out of these. So you can't just use a regular cobblestone pipe to transport it. Uh, you do need a wooden one. And something to keep in mind, and I'll show you this when we put down this kinesis pipe, is when you're using a wooden pipe, whether it's kinesis or regular, uh, the side that is colored brown is gonna be the extraction side. So both of these is extracting power from, and then this is the output channel right here. So this side right here is as it's gonna go. So it'll pull from these two and go that direction. So uh, I believe you can use a wrench to change this if you put one down and you wanna you know, alter it because it's messed up, um, but we're not gonna have to deal with that today. So uh, we put that down. And now we can take our mining well and we can place that down right next to it. Now, if we were planning on just moving everything all together, we could place the mining well down right where this pipe is. And these would be perfectly fine to input power into it. But then, of course, we would need to move this and then we'd move these and everything would get moved. Uh, so we're going to put this down here and you can see it connects. So the power is going to go in there and uh, it's going to mine down right below it. So hopefully there's no lava down there. And if we wanted to turn these on, we do need to give it a redstone signal. So you could use a lever or a redstone torch. I'm going to use a redstone torch. Something to keep in mind is that these can overheat. So it's really hard to see right now. Well, I guess it's not super hard to see because we've you know filtered out a lot of the things in JEI. Um, but sometimes it's blocking this. But the power it shows, the current output, the stored energy, and then the heat. And the heat is very important because these Sterling engines, they didn't always used to do this, but they will blow up if they are allowed to run and build up heat. Now, the heat is always maintained as long as there's somewhere for the power to go. But the problem becomes the minute the system stops running, these are going to start to heat up and they start out as blue, then they get green, then yellow, then red. And I believe at 250 degrees Celsius, they're going to explode. And of course, you don't want that. Explosions are always a bad thing. They're never a good thing. Um, so you don't want these to explode. So the way I set it up is I just basically did a little bit of a trial run and, uh, you could use a lever and you could just flip it off every time you wanted them to turn off. But instead of having to do that, I decided that I would just figure out that two pieces of coal is roughly enough if you're at an average height. So if you're, if your Y is an average height, uh, in this case, we're 66, anywhere probably from like 60 to like 80, um, it would apply to this. But as long as you put in two pieces of coal into each of these, they should not overheat. It probably gets them up. It gets them like between green and yellow, but that's only like a hundred low 100s degrees Celsius. So they're very far from exploding and uh, it should run the system and then it'll stop. So every time you move it, you'll just put in two pieces of coal and you're perfectly fine to go do other stuff and really not care about the system and worry about it blowing up and blowing up your chest and all the valuable things that you worked really hard for. Um, so if we were to put these in there, it would actually start running now. Obviously we can get rid of the redstone torch and then we should be fine to put these in and they won't actually start running right now. And of course I don't want them to run yet because we've gotten nowhere for the items to go. And that's what we're going to do right now. We'll put the chest down right here. And of course this isn't going to connect because this is a kinesis pipe. If it were a regular wooden pipe, it would connect to this and it would, uh, if we were to attach a redstone engine to it and power the redstone engine with a redstone signal, it would actually pull the items out. But we don't need to worry about doing that right now because the mining well automatically outputs items. If we didn't hook anything up to it, it would just spit them out the top of it. Uh, so we don't need to worry about sucking items out from it. It wants to push them out to us. So we don't actually need a wooden transport pipe. We just need a cobblestone transport pipe right there. You can put it on any side or you can put the chest right next to it. But I want to have the chest over here so that, again, all we need to do when it's ready to move is we take this, we move it over one. We put down an extra cobblestone pipe here. We put down a cobblestone kinesis pipe right here and boom, it's hooked up again to the system and that's all we have to do. So now it actually should be able to run. It should be completely set up and good to go. So all we got to do is come over here, grab the redstone torch, throw it down. And of course this will stay down. Um, and then you can see these start running. If we look in here, you can see they've got some stored energy and every time it pumps, it puts out that stored energy and the heat drops and it goes back to 20 degrees Celsius and that's the controlled temperature. So uh, it only goes up if it's actually uh, you got no, got nowhere for the energy to go. And of course, you can see right here that this beam, I guess it really looks like it's a full texture, but it actually is a beam based on how much energy is being sent through it. 
Um, this is completely filled right now, and you'll see eventually if we were to get rid of these um, or you know take the coal out, that this beam would shrink and shrink until it's gone. Um, but this system is running, and if we were to break this block down here, we can see it actually extends a mining tube down below it, and you can watch it go down if you want. It's pretty cool. Uh, as it digs down, and you can see the items coming out here, being put into the chest, so you've got some cobblestone, diorite, dirt, nothing super fancy, um, but it's going down, and the minute it hits lava, it'll stop. Now, of course, there are a couple things to keep in mind, uh, things that you can't really account for, and that's like if you were to hit lava uh, when, you know, you, you have the mining well, and you were to hit lava at, you know... 10 blocks down from where you started randomly, um, then these might actually be able to heat up a certain amount. But if it makes it down, uh, you know, the average amount, whether it's to bedrock or really to lava spawning level, you shouldn't again have to worry about these overheating. And I'll let them run through their whole process just so I can show you guys that they will not in fact explode. And if they do, then I'll stand here and die with them because the captain sinks with his ship, obviously. Um, but you'll also be able to see when this eventually stops because of course, if you have, you know, this block over here broken, uh, you'll be able to see when the animation stops extending down. And also, you can probably just get a rough estimate from how many blocks are in here. So we're probably around right now, like 50-ish. I only say like 50-ish because obviously I could count the exact number. But there's a couple blocks that are, you know, mid-transport right now. So it'll probably stop within, you know, 5, 10 blocks. And we'll be able to see. You can see the Sterling engines are starting to wind down on their power now. They've got about half a piece of coal left to burn. And, oh, still going. Huh. Should finish up soon. Okay, so there we go. So you can see this light turned red, so you can tell that it's off. It was green before, and it sucked up the mining well. So there's nothing else down there right now. Uh, whether it hit lava or bedrock, we'll be able to tell. But now you can see that the stored energy in these is going up, and the heat is going up. And I'm hoping they turn green, um, but it's because there's nowhere for the energy to go. So this is full. There they go. They turned green, so the heat passed 85 degrees Celsius. Still have stored power in there. Uh, still going up, but you can see that they should be stopping soon, and they stopped at 111 degrees Celsius. So uh, we went all the way down 66 blocks, and they were able to get enough power that if you were at around 80, it would have mined all the way down still, but they didn't get hot enough to actually explode. And so these will sit like this, and if we were to break this, and uh, I would always be careful to just cover up this area that you've mined in. Um, oh, I guess you can't do that because this thing's actually going to start running again. That's great. Well, after the fact, I would cover up the area that you've mined in. Uh, I always fear, and I don't know if there's a, like a coding thing to prevent this um, with how it pops out, but I've always feared that the item will drop back down the hole. Um, but yeah, so now we've got this hole here, so I would cover it up with something. Chances are I would do cobblestone, so I know I've mined there, but I wouldn't want to walk down that hole and fall down it because you will die. Uh, so definitely probably a good idea to cover it up. But now what we can do is put down the mining well, and you can see it's a green light again, so it's good to go. There's stuff below it to mine. And then all we have to do is put down the cobblestone kinesis pipe. We'll put the co uh, cobblestone transport pipe down first because it'll start pumping out items the minute we put this down. Um, but if you see now, also this is a side note. Um, this is actually a beam. It's not a full texture. So I just thought that was a cool note. You can see it gets smaller depending on how much energy is in there. But now if we put this down, it fills up again. These start running again to burn off the stored energy, which is very, very minimal. And then we would put two in each of these and it should be able to go and it'll start running again. And hopefully we'll get a little bit more lucky this time in terms of getting, you know, some actual iron or gold or redstone or maybe even some diamonds so we can upgrade to a quarry. But I think that's going to be it for today, guys. That covers the very early on basics of getting some power going. Very simple setup, actually using the power uh, and actually getting some automated mining going, which is definitely what I would recommend you do early on just to make your life a little bit nicer. Whether you want to mine alongside this or what, uh, I would 100% go for that very early on and uh, hopefully speed up your you know, progression to the later, more interesting things a little bit faster. But I hope you guys are looking forward to this series as much as I am. For those of you that watch the other series, whether it's SevTech or Surviving with Thermal Expansion, both of those series will be continuing. But the Thermal Expansion one, we're nearing the end. There's still plenty of episodes left, but I wanted to get a little bit of a jump start on this one. So there isn't a huge break when that series ends. And then we're waiting for another one to begin. And then, you know, having a little bit of a slow start. So they'll be running simultaneously until the Thermal Expansion one ends. And maybe I'll start up another one after that and keep two running. Not really sure just yet, but a lot of people, even during the Thermal Expansion series, have been requesting every video in the comments, play Buildcraft, play Buildcraft. 
draft. So we're doing it right now. Again, I hope you guys are looking forward to the series. If there's anything specific you want to see or any questions you may have, as always, feel free to post them in the comments and I will do my best to respond. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys again so much for the support with all the Surviving Wiss series. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will talk to you guys later. Sleep.